so the next speaker is uh, Kirill Kovalenko from uh, MIT in Moscow, in Russia. So we will talk about d-dimensional oscillators in simplicial structures. I think we will use the Kuramoto model on simplicial complexes. So please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to stand here. Like all the previous speakers had just beautiful presentations and my presentation in comparison to them is quite simple. Nevertheless, I hope I will be able to tell you something interesting. I will discuss what the occurrence of high order interaction in uh, oscillator system, how it, it can influence the properties of the synchronization in these systems. More specifically, I will tell, it doesn't work. Yeah, I will talk about uh, one model, which is uh, the generalization of the classical Kuramoto model, uh, which was introduced by Ishiki Kuramoto in order to describe some synchronization scenarios in, in uh, oscillators model in chemistry and biology. After that, it found a lot of applications and really diff very different areas, physical system, neuroscience, flocking of birds, drones, etc. So in this system, every agent is described by its phase theta i, has its own natural frequency omega i, and is coupled to with all other oscillators with some coupling strength lambda. So it is like the simplest variant of this model and the original one. Of course, after that, there was a great number of generalization of this model, because which could be applied to even more complex system. One of this uh, uh, direction of generalization is considering not only two body interactions, uh, which is called one simplex very thanks for Karen for introducing this term and maybe for example uh, introducing free body interaction which is two simplex or four body interaction is is free simplex so on the slide you can see the generalization to two simplex interaction as you can see here now we have some over all triangles and the, the strength of the coupling now it's not equal to the sum of the coupling of pairwise interactions. So it's different and has different properties. Another dimension, another direction where we can take uh, to generalize this model is considering not only uh, one coordinate, but uh, a unit vectors. So to, to extend our model to some d-dimensional space. In this case, if we consider unit vectors, which corresponds to a phase, and anti-symmetric matrices, which corresponds to natural frequency, and then uh, denote rho as a mean vector of all agents, then the generalized equation uh, for this model uh, reads us the following, as you can see on the screen. So I will try to briefly show you how to it corresponds to the usual model. You can see this is a uh, visualization of the vectorial form, and here the it's uh, uh, for d equal to 2, which corresponds to the usual Kuramoto setting. In this case, omega uh, theta i for i th agent uh, describes the angle of the theta i in polar coordinates. Uh, omega uh, i corresponds to matrix uh, wi, and then the term on the right side of the equation is equal to the projection of sigma i on the line perpendicular to uh, of the of the sigma j to the line perpendicular to sigma i, and as that can be seen, it is equal to the sign. Yeah. Ah, можно мышкой показать. Ah, sorry. So this term is equal to the sign of the difference between angles of these two vectors. So it can be shown that this model indeed is reducible to the usual Kuramoto model. In our case, we consider some. Uh, model which is both generalizing the usual Kuramoto model to two simplex interaction and two d-dimensional space. As you can see, if we make some simplification, uh, this model will look like this and it's quite different from the usual model, either two simplex interaction or just d-dimension. And we found many differences, interesting properties in two simplex interaction compared to one simplex interaction model. So. Now I'll show you some results. Let us call R to be equal the order parameter or the of the synchronization of the system. And as you can see, there is a result of our simulation and theory prediction 
where simulation is marked by markers, squared and uh, circle markers, and the Fury prediction is solid lines. First, as you can see, a Fury prediction just perfectly corresponds to uh, experiment, to the simulation. And one feature that we, one difference that we can see immediately from the picture is that in case of one simplex, which is upper row, there is just only continuous transition in both cases. And for odd dimension, there is discontinuous transition at zero to fully non saccharide state. And for uh, two simplex interaction, free body interaction, there is discontinuous transition from fully synchronized state to non-synchronized state in even case and from fully synchronized state to partially synchronized states uh, in uh, d equal to 3. Okay, so let us fill the table of the difference in order to sum up what is, uh, in order to compare these two cases. So as I said, in case of one simplex, the transition is mostly continuous. In case of two simplex, the transition is abrupt. So the next slide shows that indeed it happens not only for dimension two and dimension three, but uh, for greater dimension also. On, on the upper part of the picture, uh, there is a, a numerical simulation of Fury prediction for even dimensions two, four, six, and eight, and four lower. And the lower part of the picture, uh, there is, on the slide, there is a Fury prediction and simulation for odd dimensions. Also, I must note that, as you can see here, for odd dimension, we have par partial synchronization also for negative values of lambda, which could not be observed in the case of one simplex. I will tell, uh, talk about uh, it a little bit later. Okay, so the next point which I want to discuss is, is the existence of multistability. In case of only pairwise interaction, there can be only one stable state of the system, while for the case of two simplex interactions, we can have multiple stable states of the system, starting from fully uh, synchronized to totally non-synchronized. I will show it in the next picture. As you can see here, we have the uh, process of desynchronization from fully synchronized state, so-called backward transition. And for start, uh, depending on the initial conditions, this process is different and the state of the system for different lambda is also different. So this is existence of stability. And now I can also talk about the forward and the backward transitions in this case. So in the case of one simplex, both forward and backward transition occur due to the reason that system can be in only one stable state. So it doesn't matter from which side you approach concrete value of lambda, it can be only in one state. But in case of two simplex, only background transition occurs. Uh, it due to the reason that the synchronization of the system never increases. It may be a good property in case if we want to avoid synchronization, like for example in neuroscience. We don't have, don't want to have a synchronization of the full brain. Okay. The next point, the last but not the least, I want to discuss the, the synchronization for negative lambdas. So in case of one simple simplex, there is could be no possible synchronization for negative lambda or values of lambda for any dimension. But in case of two simplex, there could be a partial synchronization for negative lambda sub lambda in case of odd d and d equal to two. For other even dimensions, our theory does not prove or disprove the existence of such states, but we uh, haven't observed them in our simulation. So, so on the picture, you can see the right part is what I already showed to you. This is the transition for uh, odd d, and indeed there is a partial synchronization for negative values of uh, compound strength. But And the left picture, uh, the left part of this slide shows us the uh, process of desynchronization for negative, negative values of lambda for d equal to 2. What's interesting about it is that in order to see the synchronization, the value of lambda should be uh, great negative. So it's in, uh, in our case, firstly, we predicted this state by theory, and after that, we tried to check it by our numerical simulation, and indeed, we found that state, because if we check only like small range up to minus 20, we could not see the positive coherence in this case. So, uh, okay, now I'll talk a little bit about the theory part, which we used in order to make our theory predictions. 
the main idea was to consider a self-consistent equation. So we say, okay, let us replace the mean vector with some constant vector. After that, we want to find a stationary points for each agent, which is uh, we can do just uh, putting the derivative in time of this agent equal to zero. We find the we solve the solution in order to find stationary points of uh, each agent. If we don't have a solution, we assume that on average the projection of this agent on the mean vector is zero. And after that, we say that R should be equal to the average projection of all this uh, stationary point of agents on the row tilde axis. And after that, we say we can find the stationary value of uh, order parameter of the system from the self-consistent equation. So I must note that we only take an account stable stationary points for agent. We don't want to take an account the points of agent which are not stable and agent will not stay in this position. In order to choose to decide which points are stable and unstable, we take a small perturbation from a stationary point and write an equation of motions. Like write equations of motion. So in case of one simplex, you can see it's the upper equation. And in case of two simplex, it's the equation below. So as you can see, depending on the sign or before uh, delta sigma i squared, this perturbation either exponentially increases or this exponentially decays. So, and the tricky part in case of uh, one simplex, it's easy to uh, say how it depends on the uh, stationary point, it's just one value. But in case of two simplex, we need to take an average of this uh, value. And this is the tricky part, which is lots of technical details, I will omit. So, and of course, this is only just one result and we can make uh, this, uh, discuss the next steps we, which we can do in order to uh, continue research in this area. First of all, I will show you uh, the definitions for usual Kuramoto model for d equal to 2, not in simplicial, not in uh, vectorial form because it will be uh, more and more complex. So first of all, we can uh, consider networks where the all interactions between agents are not equal. Maybe some are stronger, maybe some just some of them just don't exist. So this and we can try to extend this interaction network to two simplex, three simplex, or for example, two D dimension. Another direction of research is to consider not only first derivative in time but second derivative in time also inertia. So in this case, it's also interesting, and even for usual Kuramoto model, it has really different properties from the uh, just original Kuramoto model. So uh, it can be also really applicable. It can be applied in the case of power grid system, where we have also second derivative of time dependence. And the last very natural step, it's considering mixed model, when we have uh, both pairwise interactions and free body interactions. And talking about this model, we already have some results in our group uh, about this model. I will show you, I will share you with you on the next slide. So the next slide shows you the theory prediction in the upper row and the simulation in the lower row. So, and uh, the odd columns is uh, the cases when we start from full synchronized states and uh, the even columns in the case we start from non-synchronized states. And what's interesting, we already see here that there are areas of multi-stability and there is area where there is only one stable case. And as I mentioned before, there is an area for d equal to two where from both negative coupling strength in case of one simplex interaction and two simplex interactions still we can have some positive coherence of the system. So I think it's really interesting result because it can have inspire us to consider different uh, implications. For example, in social science, it's well known that if we have, uh, if all the members, isolators of society behave as contrarians, so they try to oppose the main field of the population, then in case of pairwise interaction, there could be no coherent dynamics in this case. But as our result shows, in case if we consider not only pairwise interaction by higher order interaction, it's worth checking for occurrence of partial coherence, uh, even if all members are contrarians. Well, I will not speculate further why it could be, why it 
can happen, how we can extract uh, some meaning from the results of Kuramoto model, but what I can note is definitely that it's worth considering this scenario. Okay, so, and there is some references, useful link, which you can read and uh, investigate this topic a little bit more. Thank you very much. So I can ask, I will, I will be happy to answer your questions. Hey, thank you very much for an interesting talk and very clear.